Welcome back, Cannonites. After a well-deserved week off, Cannon Fodder is back this week with an overview of some of the Halo Wars 2 news from the past week and a look at the upcoming Warzone Firefight update. So, let's get to it. We open with what amounts to a review of the major reveals from this past week. We start out, of course, with the Halo Wars 2 cinematic trailer and move on to a behind-the-scenes video about the making of that trailer and the creative process for Halo Wars 2 between 343 and Blur Studios. You've likely seen clips from this BTS in my own and other YouTubers' videos, but if you want to check out the full thing, click on the screen or check for the link in the description box. After that, Grim links to a post-conference knowledge drop that details everything you need to know about Halo Wars 2, a link to info about Halo Wars 2 leaderboards and associated prizes, and finally, a state of the beta from earlier this week. Fun fact, the beta period has been extended through Wednesday, so anyone who missed out initially can enjoy at least a couple days of Halo Wars 2 goodness. Grimm goes on to discuss Halo Wars 2's story and ends up confirming what many of the lore community had figured out. The story of the Flood Infection form from Halo Escalation Issue 6 will be addressed in the Halo Tales from Slipspace Anthology comic, coming later this year. The next section is an interview with 343's Jeremy Cook and Kevin Grace. It's a nice, short interview that provides some basic ideas into the insight behind Halo Wars 2, both from an art and design standpoint and a story standpoint. It's not all that new if you've been watching every single interview that was done during E3, but it's insightful enough that if you haven't had the time to track all these down, it's worth your while. Check it out in the full Cannon Fodder article. My biggest question right now though is, why in the hell is Halo Wars 2 codenamed Hogan? Yeah, I'm not making that up. There's a reason this interview was called Hogan's Heroes. Anyway, we move on to some rather exciting news, Halo Wars Definitive Edition. This is a special remaster of the original game ported to Xbox One with improved graphics, new achievements, and all the Halo Wars DLC. Even better, the game will be an Xbox Play Anywhere title like Halo Wars 2. What that means is you'll be able to play both titles on the Xbox One or a Windows 10 computer. Sadly, neither will have cross-play, but the Play Anywhere is still awesome. The Halo Wars Definitive Edition will be included with the Halo Wars Ultimate Edition. With that, we close out our Halo Wars 2 discussion and focus on Warzone Firefight and some of the material coming with it. We start with the Temple Banshee. These Golden Banshees were used by an old order known as the Sky Cavaliers. Not unlike the ascetics, the Sky Cavalier Order was suppressed under the rule of the Prophets, but with the fall of the Covenant, the Ancient Order is soaring through the Sanghelio skies once again. So, another Order once suppressed by the Prophets is now on the rise. Nice. After that, we take a look at a couple armor permutations, starting with Cinder. Used by Spartan Special Containment Units, Cinder Armor features thermal superconducting coatings and a reinforced shock-absorbing gel layer to mitigate the risk of using thermobaric and incendiary weapons at close range. Special containment teams respond to a wide range of hazard biological containment, mitigation, and eradication issues at UNSC facilities. For this reason, the Cinder Helmet features a full suite of lab-grade chem sniffers and hazmat filters. I don't know about you, but I see the name, I read Biological Contaminant, I immediately think Flood. That or any one of the bioweapons Covenant factions keep wanting to use against humanity. Next up is Cyclops. The Cyclops can parasitically connect to both UEG and Covenant Urban Infrastructure Networks, levering their hardware and databases to augment its own network of emplacement sensors, drones, and TACnet links. Cyclops suits are urban predators, created to hunt in dense urban and industrial environments. The UNSC Infinity's increased engagement on rebellious human colonies and Covenant worlds provides ideal testing grounds. A suit designed for urban environments, notably for use against human rebellion. At this point, I'm just constantly reminded of how cool it would be if human enemies would be in Halo. Please, 343. Moving forward, we get a quick look at one of the two Brute Plasma Rifle variants coming to the Warzone Firefight update. The existence of these, coupled with the background blur provided by Grimm, really hint at a Jural Hanai resurgence. If that's a simple hint at the Banished or something greater, remains to be seen. We close out today with a bit of a canon blurb for an upcoming Warzone map, which many fans may be excited to find out is set on Sun Helios. Baroque stone ruins lie atop an advanced complex dating to the earliest period of Sun Heli interstellar expansion. The San Shayun prophets and their ministries ruled Sun Helios for millennia, but the fortunes of the Sun Heli waxed and waned long before the Covenant's formation. In an age long forgotten, this remote sanctum was a lush garden in the home of towers of glass and steel used to launch the first Sanghili interplanetary probes. But when the planet's climate shifted and the secrets of anti-gravity were discovered, the towers fell into disuse and eventually eroded away, forgotten in the rush to the stars. The War of Beginnings came and went before the shadow of buildings once again fell across this land, 
as warrior ascetics seeking their return to ancient traditions built their homes and houses of knowledge and training in what was then a desert. Now, as if a cycle was turning, their fallen temples and cloisters lie crumbling in the hot winds, and strange new structures plant themselves in the bones of the old as life blooms in the hills. Well, that's kind of ominous. And damn cool. An area that saw the first Sanghili attempts to reach the stars, later used by those wanting to hide from the Covenant and keep their old ways alive. Speaking to that specifically, while reading, I was immediately reminded of the Usan Sanghili who wanted nothing to do with the Covenant. I wonder if there might be a connection though I'm kind of doubting it. But, as I said, that closes the main article. Before moving on to the featured universe entry, let's stop over at this week's community update. Along with a little light info on the Warzone Assault Map prospect, we get a better look at some concept art for that Sanghelios Warzone map, and some more questions answered on Halo Wars 2, including one on the new look for Anders and Cutters. Based on the comments I get, I know many of you are aware of the reasons, but I'm sure others aren't. Plus, we get names for the voice actors slash facial models for both characters. Cutter is now played by and modeled after Gideon Emery, and Anders is played by slash modeled after Faye Kingsley. Gideon Emery may sound familiar to fans as he was actually the voice of Governor Sloan in Halo 5 and has done a ton of voice work for video games along with some live action roles. Faye Kingsley has done a ton of roles for TV, movies, and games, but her recent credits stood out to me. She played the Pilgrim in Legends of Tomorrow, a deadly enemy in that show and a very kick-ass one, and was the voice of Faith Connors in Mirror's Edge Catalyst. So, much as I hate that they had to change Anders, the fanboy inside me is actually pretty excited to see and hear Miss Kingsley's take on the Professor. Anyway, that brings that to an end, and we arrive at the featured universe entry this week, Installation 00, aka The Lesser Arc. This arc was the second of two arcs, the first being called The Greater Arc as it constructed larger halos and thus itself was larger. Installation 00 constructed six of the seven rings for the final Halo array, Installation 07 actually being one of the last remaining rings from the original 12 ring array. It was from Installation 00 that the Isodidact fired the Halo array in 97,445 BCE. On December 11, 2552, the UNSC and Covenant found themselves on the Ark in the final battle of the Human Covenant War. It was here that the war ended in a human Sanghili victory, and a Halo ring was fired to eliminate the threat of the Flood. And that's it for this week. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to a couple of individuals who are working on their own machinima series called Rogue Squad. They haven't really started production just yet, but if you're interested and want to keep up with it, I've left Instagram links in the description for ThugLife858 and Headhunter117, both of whom are working on the project. So, that does it today. Thanks for watching as always, and until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.